animated video. The last one I made was on the electrical system, and as you recall, it was snowing in Vegas. It was the weather was cold, and I no longer had that excuse. So it looks like I have to do some real work now. Um, but during that time, I took advantage of that cold weather to really uh, do some more CAD work, computer-aided design work, and I I made a a, a posting on CheaprvLiving.com, uh, the forums. And by the way, I really encourage you to uh, frequent those forums because they're, they're really valuable. There are a lot of smart people there who are really willing to help you. They're not much into YouTube, or a lot of them aren't, but nevertheless, they uh, offer some really good advice. And uh, my goal in working on a lot of the CAD was to finish up um, as much of the detailed uh, design using aluminum. Because, as you recall, one of the unique features about what I'm doing is I'm going to build everything with aluminum. And not only did I need to finish out that de the design of all that stuff, but I also needed to come up with a detailed estimate for, uh, getting, uh, for buying the aluminum. And the cheapest place I've found is a local place here. It was called Curtis Steel Company. And uh, unfortunately, in order to get those low prices, you have to buy links that are like 16 feet or 25 feet or whatever. Now, you can go to their facility and cut those, uh, that aluminum material yourself, but it's kind of a pain. So I wanted to get an estimate of my total needs for all the aluminum and then get them to deliver it all at once. And, and uh, today they did that, actually. They delivered it today. I, I could just tell you that for all the aluminum that uh, I have uh, in this project, and you've seen my CAD stuff, I think, so you're aware of just how much aluminum there is. It came up to a total of, uh, with tax, of $540. So it's not the cheapest. But um, on the other hand, I'm not using 8020, which is a particular type of uh, aluminum construction that a lot of people are using in their vans, which I think is kind of overkill for my purposes. And I'm using uh, angle, iron, angle aluminum and flat bar aluminum and a little bit of channel aluminum. And uh, it's about eight times cheaper than 8020. So I would encourage you to look at that. Now, I went to the forums because I really, uh, you know, I'm a novice at this. I don't pretend to be an expert, so you're going to see my mistakes in this as long, <laughs> along with everything else. But um, I did find a, a lady on uh, CheapRVForums.com, and she goes by the username of Maki2, M-A-K-I-2. And I encourage you to look at any posts that she makes because she is really, she's a smart lady. and. She, uh, she's into CAD. She also has a lot of experience in working with aluminum, and, and especially aluminum cabinets. And uh, she gave me a lot of good advice. I'm going to include the links to uh, some of those uh, posting. It's sort of a, um, a, a trail of posts, you know, a thread that you can uh, read through. And I encourage you to do that if you're at all considering using aluminum in your build. Um, I'm using aluminum because I just want the strength. Um, I had a feeling that it would be easier for me to work with than wood, and so that's the reason why I'm doing it. But before we get started here, I want to um, I want to uh, give you a little bit of a tour of what I'm working with. This is the uh, electrical box that you've seen in my CAD drawing, and I'm not finished with it by any means, but I am um, working on it so I thought I would show you my progress. These are the switches that I'm going to be using, the disconnects, along with these inline fuses, which I thought were pretty innovative and saved me a lot of uh, space in my box. I've got an AC breaker here, okay, which I've managed to mount inside a conventional um, receptacle box. Uh, some other outstanding things about this. Um, well, I'm not sure that there are anything particularly outstanding, except, oh, one thing that's kind of interesting is that I'm going to talk about rivets in a minute, but for this build, I use screws. So I drilled and tapped screws into everything. And the reason was because I wanted to be able to take things apart. I want to be able to slide these batteries out, you know, whenever I want. And basically, I'll undo these bolts and I can take this whole assembly apart. 
So that was one of the, my main motivations for um, using screws here instead of uh, rivets. Now, rivets, uh, Mackie 2 gave me a lot of really good information about rivets and I just ordered a bunch of them. I did use one rivet in here just to experiment because I don't have any experience with using rivets. But this is a conventional dome rivet. My concern with rivets is I was going to have a lot of stuff hanging on one side and underneath perhaps. Um, that's not the case actually with these dome rivets. They, if you get a, a dome rivet, this is a 3 8 rivet with a grip of 1 quarter inch because I'm using 1 8 inch material here. 1 8 inch angle and then 1 inch, 1 8 inch, well this is another angle but it could be angle or, fl or flat bar. Um, if you get a 1 quarter inch grip then it will grab um, you know both both uh, pieces of aluminum and it will not give you a lot of uh, excess on the other side. I don't think I can angle my camera around to show you the uh, bottom side of this but there it's, it's almost flush so it's not a big consideration. And I'm going to be using rivets extensively on the rest of my build, the rest of the cabinets, which I'll show you in future videos. Um, but to gear up for that, I bought, um, I bought a few things that will help me quite a bit. One of them is a big angle bracket. This was suggested by Mackie 2. And uh, the purpose of this is to be able to lay your assembly down in the bracket and then clamp it to the sides of the bracket to get really square corners. That's worked out. One thing I would mention to you is that I bought this um, copper shield. Copper shield is for filling my uh, terminals with uh, this copper compound to get a really good seal. Now, let me tell you, be sure to wear gloves because this is really a messy job using this stuff. I think it does a good job, but it is quite messy. And so I encourage you to be careful. You don't want to get copper all over your hands all the time. Um, some of the other tools that I'm using is I, I did go to Harbor Freight and I bought a cheap um, drill press. And this one cost me, gosh, I think with their 20% discount, I think it was maybe $65 for that. It wasn't really very much. And uh, I really encourage you to get a drill press because, you know, especially with the small holes, most of, most of the holes that I drilled and tapped were 1 8 inch. I drilled a hole 1 8 inch in diameter in order to tap for an 8 32nd screw. And that's what I'm using mostly because the 8 32nd screw is ideal for screwing together two uh, pieces of aluminum which are 1 8 inch thick. I wanted to show this process about uh, tapping a hole for a 8 32nd screw and the reason I'm uh, choosing a uh, 1 8 inch hole there is because my material is 1 8 inch and I want the threads and the general rule of thumb is that they uh, size of the holes should be approximately the same or smaller than the thickness of the material that you're drilling the hole through. So in this case it's 1 8 inch and I can put in an, an 832 screw in here. And normally the way you would tap this is in order to make threads in that hole is to use a tap and die set like this. However, I found it much more convenient to use a drill to do this, but you have to be careful because this is not a drill bit. It doesn't behave the same way as a drill bit, and you have to do a couple of things differently. The first thing you have to do differently is you have to put your uh, the torque setting of your drill. In my case, what I found works best is about 7 because what's going to happen is I'm going to drill through here, and then the... Um, the threads of the tap here are going to get full of aluminum and you need to clean those out. So the way you do that is to reverse direction a little bit and then you go in a little bit more and then you reverse direction and then you go in a little bit more until you go all the way through and then when you extract you don't just pull it out 
you go in the reverse direction in order to um, unscrew the tap from the hole. All right, so it's a little bit, it takes a, a little bit of practice to do this. And basically you turn the drill on and you, and you press down until it starts slipping and then reverse it and you come back and you just keep doing that. So let me show you how you, we do this. So I go, so it's going in the clockwise direction. That's good. Okay, so I go, all right. Now I reverse a little bit. I go forward. Did you hear that click, click, click? That means it was starting to slip. So now I go in the reverse direction and then it, it, it's clicking in the reverse direction too because it's starting to get bound up in there. You don't want to get it to be too bound down or else you'll either break the tap or else you have to get a pair of pliers and turn on it and rigmarole. So you just keep doing this. All right, that's in reverse. And now this time I'll bet you I can all be all I'll be able to go all the way through. I did. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, it's working. I just need to get a screwdriver. But yeah, I can easily turn it in and out. Yeah, it's going through. So that's how you do that. Okay, and uh, so using a lot of the holes that I drilled were one eighth inch, and for those really small drill bits. Um, you know, if you're doing it by hand, it's really easy to break a, a drill bit. I've already broken one. And, uh, but if you put it in the drill press and you use some WD-40 to lubricate the, um, the drill bit, it really, uh, it goes very slick and uh, you're much less likely to break a bit. The other thing that I have is a uh, miter saw, which I borrowed from a friend of mine. Um, I worked up a little jig here to try to keep this angle iron as close to the um, the base as possible so that I can cut it just like that and uh, and this one uh, my friend happened to have a very very expensive uh, saw blade which works for uh, aluminum and for uh, actually for steel and for wood um, so I didn't have to, fortunately I didn't have to buy a really expensive saw blade, but that saw blade works very well for me. Okay, let me just show you the aluminum that I bought. This is how it came. This is how the aluminum came. So there's a piece of channel which is 25 feet long. And then uh, 18 pieces of flat and uh, a whole bunch of pieces of angle iron and then for the roof I bought some uh, aluminum sheeting which which is um, uh, 0.04 inches and so that's what I'm going to be using for my rooftop carrier. One of the things I bought um, with uh, Mackie 2's suggestion is this uh, Clico set. It's a set of they're called Clicos and a a pliers that you use with them. Now the purpose of this is to, I don't think I can do this one-handed. Let me see if I can put this in here. What you do is you drill a hole and then you can put one of these things in there and release it and it holds it, holds the pieces together temporarily. Okay, so as you recall, my original plan was to glue pieces of aluminum together and I was really concerned about um, being able to build a whole piece and then clamp it and, and then glue it all at once because you want to do all your gluing at once. The same thing ha applies to rivets. You want to be able to rivet your stuff all at once too, although there's less pressure than with gluing them. Nevertheless, these things allow you to um, drill a hole and before you put in the rivet, you put one of these in there to hold your work. So you can fabricate your whole assembly using Clicos. And then when you're satisfied that everything is, is square and, is, and looks good, then you can go in 
and you can rivet everything, which is a little bit more permanent of a connection. Um, now you can drill out the rivets, but that's kind of a pain in the neck. So those Clicos are really gonna make it easier to work with the aluminum. Now the other thing that I did uh, on the uh, cheaprv.com forum was to discuss the installation of my Max Air fan. And this was in response to a uh, suggestion by, again, Mackie too, she's becoming my best friend on Cheap RV Living, um, to uh, look at the design, my design, my roof assembly design. Because as you recall, I've got a, a roof assembly which uh, allows for me to have storage underneath it. Uh, my PV panel is on top of it, and then it's enclosed by this stainless steel box. Well, the concern is, and I mentioned it was going to be a hot box, but uh, she and others indicated that that, may, that box may be hotter than what I want, and it may cause deterioration of the uh, PV panel as a result of that. So I started looking at ways to ventilate that, and my idea was to put a couple of holes maybe in the front of the enclosure uh, so that I could uh, pull air in, you know, um, and then exhaust it out the back somehow. Now, the problem is that may not be enough. There may not be enough natural convection to do that. And I wasn't really sure about how big a holes to put in there or where to put them. Uh, she some, uh, she, she suggest, suggested that I take an active approach and actually get a fan, you know, with a thermostat to ventilate that area. Well, it so happens that I had this Max Air fan up there. And uh, one of the uh, really... Uh, lucky things I guess is that Maxair sends you this, um, this sort of baffle or this ring um, that they use to uh, actually enable people who have RVs to mount their fan on the roof and then have this extension of the uh, air channel down into the RV past insulation or um, trusses or whatever you have, but maybe six inches or so, so that you, on the bottom side you can mount um, the uh, final piece on the ceiling of your RV. So you get the, the, this piece that, that extends all the way down to the ceiling of your RV and extends up so that you can mount your uh, actual Max Air fan maybe six or eight inches above that lower part. Well that sort of collar really helps me because what that means is I can mount my Max Air fan up a little bit and I can cut a, 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 a panel door in that baffle and then I can open that and then I can suck in air across the, uh, across the storage space and out the back using my Max Air fan. And so then the question that you have is, well, how big a hole should I uh, put in the front of the storage space? And also, will, how will it compete with air that I draw up from in, inside the van? So I started looking at that and I calculated the maximum area that uh, I was, that was on the output of the Max Air fan. And then I divided that in two and decided that that was going to be the maximum area for the input holes, uh, both on the uh, roof in the storage space and also the holes in the floor of my van. So if I had the input holes were approximately the same and the, their sum equaled the area of the output of the fan, then I could be sure that when my Max Air fan was operating at maximum capacity, it was pulling air equally from the top and the bottom, or at least equally enough. You know? And uh, that gave me a much better idea of how big these holes were supposed to be. And it turns out that what I really need is... Um, holes that give me approximately 40 square inches um, on the, in the, uh, let's see, I think it was 40 square inches, 
from the top and from the bottom. And if I sum those up to be about 80 or 90, that's about the size of the output channel, square inches. So uh, that enabled me to finish off my design of my roof assembly and basically that's where I'm at. I think my next steps are to finish off this electrical box and then since the weather is warm I need to get in there and I need to paint the inside of the van uh, with my ceramic insulating paint. So I'll let you know how that goes and then I need to, to uh, uh, drill the holes in the bottom of my van floor. So you know, I'm not working on this tremendously fast, um, and I hope that you're not trying to get a, a set of videos which goes through everything very quickly because I, I want to show you each of my the steps along the way and, and admit my mistakes uh, <laughs> because I, I make a lot of them. And I go much slower than I thought I was going to be going, but uh, nevertheless, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I, I hope that you're uh, interested in following along with me. So thanks for watching.